Hi everyone, this is Bill from AT Makers, and today I'm happy to walk you through how to adapt a caribou game to be used with AT switches. Many of you have seen this at the Lesson Picks booth, at ASHA or other shows. We get lots of requests to do a tutorial on this, so we thought we'd make one. Here's a close-up of what the game looks like when it's all done. Notice that there's a bright highlight around the current square with a red border. That moves left to right, top to bottom, until the user hits their switch. It also works in row column mode. This is a great tool for teaching scanning and a great way to get other kids to understand what it's like to use AT switches. Here's a better look at the setup. Notice the projector behind the game. That can be up to 5 or 10 feet away depending on how bright it is. In our booth we can often position it so that nobody notices, but as you'll see it's necessary for this to work. Let's get started. So. This is an adaptation to Caribou where we took a normal switch like this one right here and it now controls the scanning and selection of the cell. And you can put any, any switch you want. This one here is an AbleNet switch. But any switch, any um, switch with a 3.5 millimeter jack uh, can work. Now I've talked through some of this before. <clears throat> So I've talked through some of this before, uh, but I wanted to show kind of the whole setup. So the, the first thing you'll notice is that uh, everything works, right? So the game still plays the same. You can push the button and open up the cells, uh, see what's in there. Uh, in this case, nothing. Uh, the keys still work, and when we tried to switch enable this, what we noticed was there was no room to put in any LEDs or lights because if you put LEDs in here, it would block the ball and that would kind of ruin the game. So, the first thing we did was we, um, we created a switch interface, a keyboard switch interface, which I've shown on uh, other videos on uh, atmakers.org. It says this interface right here, and there's another video showing how to make this, but basically the, key, the button presses are converted into key presses on um, through this device and then I'll show you how the actual lighting is done is done now. So as I back up you'll see that we have a couple other other devices in play here. We have the switch, we have the keyboard interface. A keyboard interface goes in through USB to uh, an inexpensive Chromebook but any computer at all will work. What you see on the screen here is you'll see that it is actually showing lights that scan through the different squares. And that this is being projected, if you look here, via a small projector down onto Caribou Game. So um, any, any projector would work, any PC would work. Basically, you need to be able to get the keystrokes into a PC and then project the light down. So, as far as what's on this screen, um, I will I'll show you in more detail, but basically this is actually in a web browser and it's actually just using JavaScript to light up squares in the right order. So uh, when you hit this, when you hit the button and it stops, right, so we'll put it on the camera, what it actually is doing is it is sending the letter A. So it is exactly the same as if I move over here to the computer and hit the letter A. If I want to, I can uh, light up all the squares to align it, and I can also change the mode to change it to row column scan. So in this case, it'll, sh it'll do each row, and then when you hit A, it'll start moving across, and then it will uh, line it up. So um, Obviously, I'm doing it up here with the, the screen. It works exactly the same if you hit the button because it is actually sending um, the keystrokes. Uh, the only other thing that I've done here is I've actually put it in full screen mode for the browser so that it gets out of the way and uh, doesn't light up the rest of the board. So what's nice about this setup, one of the nice things is it doesn't really matter what game you want to play. All you've got to do is set up the right cells. Now, I've written uh, the code to light these up, and I've made it available on a link for this page for Caribou. Um, it, you can just point your browser at that, and it'll start uh, playing. 
one of the things you'll have to do when you set this up uh, is when you first bring up the page, it will look, uh, let me reset it here, it will look just like this. So you'll see that it's got the grid um, and that this is off center. So as long as your projector is covering um, the page, it's covering the entire grid of, of um, pictures, you can then just go in with a mouse, uh, grab each corner of these boxes and just drag it down so that it lines up with, um, with the corners of your cell. So once you do that, and it can, it can be a little um, tricky sometimes to get the corners correct, uh, but it's not, it's not that hard. Uh, you can move this up here, and then this is the last one over. And you can get it close enough. As long as you get it fairly uh, close, you can usually uh, move the game if you need to uh, to kind of get it to line up. But it's not, it's not that hard. You just set it up like that. I'll grab this corner and drag it down a little bit. And that's good enough. If I now go ahead and let this start scanning, it will just start walking through and lighting up the cells that I wanted. I might slide it a little bit over to the left. So this is an inexpensive way. Most people actually have a spare projector uh, and a spare PC that they could use. Any PC can do this, uh, desktop, laptop, anything that has uh, the ability to feed a projector, uh, any kind of video will be able to do this as long as it can display a web page, um, you're in good shape. Uh, I'm going to make a few modifications to this. I'm going to make it so that you can choose the number of rows and columns so that it's more useful in grid games other than Caribou. And I may come up with um, some other layouts that match the lesson picks board games uh, like the, um, the ladders game and things like that. Uh, so that you can play those as well. So uh, hopefully that helps. I'm going to um, move the camera around and get a few uh, stills or, or other views of this so that you guys can see it. Uh, but I hope this, this helps answer the question, how did we do that? Uh, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Here's a close-up of the switch interface. You'll see that it takes in two um, three and a half millimeter switches. They can send different keystrokes uh, in as a keyboard, which gets plugged into the USB port. There are detailed instructions for building this for a total of about $20 uh, on the atmakers.org website. Here's a picture of the Chromebook that's used to scan, uh, show the scanning squares. Uh, we do use a Chromebook. It's probably a couple hundred dollars. Uh, it's easy to transport, but it really doesn't matter what PC you're using. Uh, we tend to stick it out of the way. It, it doesn't need to be um, used, except for if you want to change the mode where you need to hit the M key. And there'll be a, a walkthrough on those in just a second of how that interface works. Now you'll notice this is a micro, a, a Pico projector, a, a micro projector. Uh, we really do like this one. It's a P450. It's a very bright one, but it's very small and, and not cheap. We use it uh, because it's easy to travel with. You don't need this. You could take any projector, VGA projector or old projector, and prop it up if, you, if it doesn't mount on a, a tripod. Here's a quick walkthrough of the interface that's uh, used to control the, the actual scanning. Uh, when you bring up the, the page, it will look like this. Uh, it shows the, the full grid of 5 by 3 squares that you need to cover a caribou game. Uh, right off the bat, if you grab a corner, you'll see that you can drag those to stretch and you'd normally be looking at the um, looking at the par caribou game itself and looking to see how this lines up with your squares uh, you can actually stretch it at really odd angles if uh, if you've placed your projector uh, at a strange angle uh, once you've got this lined up the way you want it maybe uh, it looks something like this in our world um, there are a few things you can do to manipulate this uh, the first is if you hit the slash button, it will get you back to this screen. If you hit A, just like the, the, the switch, it will start scanning. So you'll see this is scanning all of the squares. If you hit A again, it will stop. So that's the primary interface that the end user sees, is basically hitting the A button. So you can always see what they would see just by uh, clicking A. 
Um, if you're doing two switch scanning, I would like to implement that in the future. It'll probably be A and C <clears throat> will be the letters to do that. But um, it is not implemented yet. So when you are stopped like this, if you want to change modes and switch to row column scanning, you can hit the M button. Uh, and then when you start running again, you will see that it is now uh, switching through the rows. And if you hit A, it will then start doing the columns. Hit A again and it'll stop. And when you hit A again, it'll start scanning the rows again. So that's the way you switch between modes. I do recommend uh, for your own sanity that you switch modes when you're stopped. It is actually behaving properly, but it looks very strange if you don't. So I'll switch modes back. Um, and then the last thing that we have uh, that works on here right now is the ability to change speeds. So if I hit the plus key or the equal, the equal key, doesn't matter whether you hit shift or not, I can make this scan faster. Uh, that would drive a lot of people crazy. If you hit the minus key, you can slow it down. And if you hit the zero key, it will go back to the default speed. So hopefully that'll walk you through these. Uh, I would like to make some cleanup on this code before I put it live, but I'll probably push this out and then have an update within the next few weeks. So thanks a lot, and uh, I hope you enjoy this.